Hey, Ted. Mm, yes, Dan? Let me tell you about all of the horrible things that happened in Japanese classes. And I will also tell you some of the horrible things in Japanese classes if I haven't blocked them out from my memory due to trauma. All right, so me, Daniel, here, you might have heard me on some of the other podcasts, my brother Michael, are both Japanese majors in college because we... Which is a bad idea. But, you see... Terrible, terrible. Ordinarily, from what I learned... The people who typically decide to take Japanese classes are not what you would expect. You would expect that, you know, in 101 and 102, the people who need to take their language requirement classes would pick Japanese because it seems fun and exotic and they're filthy (laughs) weeaboos, and then they would move on. No. I was about to say, like, no. My my interpretation of Jap 101 is literally only weebs. Right, but you would imagine that they would fail out, that they would lose interest. They would go, this is too hard. Because as we all know from looking at, like, any weeaboo's failed DeviantArt page and Patreon with five <laughs> subscribers, they can't actually dedicate themselves to anything. But you would imagine that these, you would imagine that these people would fail out. So They do we, fail out. They That's do. the messed up so let's, thing. So let's rewind to my first day in Japanese 101. I roll in, there's like 30 people in there, right? And it is, There's like 80s music playing. Yeah, there's just, just a gaggle of weeaboos just clucking away. It's I'm like sorry, you, I don't think gaggle is the correct term. What's the what's the correct term for a collection of weeaboos? A uh, dump, because they're all like trash. A, depression? a biohazard? I like a depression. Let's go with that. Okay, there was a veritable depression of weebs in there. Like, you got people wearing fucking cat ears. You got people... Every single person has, like, an anime yeah. shirt of some sort. How many Naruto headbands? I think at least one. A non-zero number? A non-zero number. I haven't seen <laughs> I've seen them. I've been and there. You don't, want to, you don't want to know about the shit I've seen in Nam. <laughs> and so, you, you walk in there and you assume, okay... There's got to be more people coming. No, it it's just weeaboos, and it's this bad. At this point, I was at a no, community weeaboos, college. There's but then there's there's a hidden corner of Chinese kids. Yes, <laughs> they all stick to themselves. This is a this is a this is a constant. If there is, in my current class, there's only one Chinese kid, so they can't have like an you know, like a secret cabal. But when there are Chinese students, they're off in the corner, like doing stuff and they answer as a Arcane hive mind. rituals. They operate as a hive mind. It's weird. <laughs> but, so, you assume that more people are going to show up, but no, it's just these weebs and they're just talking away before class about all of this horrible shit, just like talking about their garbage anime, like, hey, can you order me that, like, lewd anime girl poster from this website for me yeah bro man i'm sure glad we get to learn japanese now so we can read all of our mangas actually no uh, let me correct myself mangas they can't pronounce anything right Mm -hmm. but you have to get their get their ramen noodles to read their mangas while they're playing ryu i'm sorry ryu in street fighter so here's the other thing so quick like three second japanese japanese instruction there's only five vowels and Everything is constant in in Japanese. You can't fuck up pronunciation unless you're an idiot. No, yes, you can. That's that is a complete misnomer. Everyone fucks up pronunciation for Japanese. Everyone, right. but not in the way that I'm talking about. In like the pronouncing you as Ryu or like manga, <laughs> right? That's yeah, just I mean, beyond the pale. <laughs> Oh, you have yet to come to Japan <laughs> to the oh, higher no. levels of of Japanese instruction, where where professors who have studied and taught Japanese for thirty years still don't have correct pronunciation. Ah, uh, can you call? Can you say that they're not pronouncing it right if they're teaching it? No, if they're, they're white, not teaching yes. Japanese, they're teaching like history, but at a Japanese oh. university. But they've okay. been in country for like thirty years, and yes, you well, can tell that they're not pronouncing it correctly because they sound like, God, it like, 
I don't know, like like, like I, I speak I speak done good English, and I've been here for a fucking but long the, time. It's, it's a difference between putting it the emph- emphasis on the wrong syllable and completely it's like that. mispronouncing <laughs> It's like if they talked like that constantly. I'm I'm by no means saying my pronunciation is perfect, but you know that like, annoying thing that people do when they like mispronounce words intentionally, like with the completely wrong sounds, is like a joke. They do it with a straight Yeah, face. like, uh, I saw a really funner internet gif with that. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Except this is just how they talk. So, anyway, everything is terrible. And in walks in, you know, the native Japanese professor, right? And the first guy that I had, he was a hard ass, and it was great. Like, he took no shit, especially considering that we were first-year students. Like, the second anybody said something wrong, he made them repeat it over and over and over until they got it right at least once, and then just never lets anything slide. You know, there's a... In American universities, you, you get used to very quickly professors not giving a shit and being very accommodating towards people being dumb. Like, they're trying to do their <laughs> That's hardest. That's fucking true. They're trying to do their hardest to make sure that everybody gets a fair shot at it, that everybody has the best opportunities to succeed, and even if you aren't wow, doing that well... what an asshole. Even if you aren't doing that well, well, boy howdy, they're not going to call you out on it in front of everybody. Not so in Japanese class. You say it wrong, do it again. You get graded... In a every, good Japanese class. You get graded every single day, and after class, they'll call people out specifically, go, you fucked that up, you fucked that up, you sucked completely, like, just just listing off everything that everybody did wrong, and just saying, Ev- okay, everybody, remember this, don't do it again. And it's just like... Uh- and Until they inevitably back, do it again. And then if you come back and do it again, they'll just say, no, 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 I told you already, don't do it again. Like, remember this. I'm not going to tell... Like, like I'm going to keep correcting you until you get it right and never let it slide. And it's amazing. It's awesome. Because if you're actually half decent, you just get to sit and watch as these weeaboos with the cat ears and the Naruto headbands are squirming, trying to say one sentence correct. And they just Wait. can't do it. Because, like, I'm imagining what it's like for the professor's perspective of having to go through this cycle of weeaboo trash every single year. Mm -hmm. So. So I can see why they're like, nah, you know what, I'm fucking done with it. Well, see, like, my first first class was full to, like, the max. I had to ask to, to get permission to join because I figured somebody would drop. It started with, like, 30 people. And then halfway through the course, it was down to like 20. And then by the end, it was down to 15. And then the next the next class was 10. And then I think by the time I got to the highest levels, we had five people. Yeah, it, yeah, it same, seems same right. story. But so in my first class, the notable characters were a chick who was a solid, solid, I don't know how many pounds, like... <laughs> All I know is that I feared for any chair she sat in. Oof. <laughs> like, she's very solid. I don't know the number. Yeah. She's a very solid, like, could go to a carnival and just completely baffle one of those guess your weight people. They're going to listen to this podcast. I hope they do. So she always wore denim everything. She wore a denim dress. You're denim. making it easier for this person to find out. A denim dress <laughs> a d- and a denim Ooh. like vest too. Mm. And dress a, d- a blue jean jet. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Continue. And assumed immediately upon seeing everybody in the class that everybody, including the professor, were gigantic weeaboos. Like second day. Oh, okay, no. but see now, are they wrong though? Yes. <laughs> See, she went up to the professor. This guy's like a 50-something Uh-oh. Japanese dude. Oh, you can't do that. And she just goes up and attempts to start talking to him about the newest episode of Inuyasha. Not like, do <laughs> Wait, you watch newest? it? Not like, do you watch it? Or, have you heard of We're it? Just she assuming just assuming that talking he's a big fan. It. And, of course, she's talking about, like, you know, dubs or whatever that are recently coming out, or I don't fucking remember. Maybe, like, a new DVD box set or some shit. But she just starts talking about it. And he's just standing there looking at her, 
and she finishes talking, and she says, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Just stone-faced, I do not know what you're talking about. It's like it's like people who go to a convention for the first time, and just and, and like especially anime conventions where they just oh cool everyone here is a super nerd like me for this thing I'm gonna go out and be as obnoxious as possible because everyone else feels the exact same way that I do and then they don't they find you incredibly annoying. The, the reaction was the best. Being told that he had no idea what she was talking about, she started describing it more like, no, 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 you must have oh, seen no, it. Oh, she's just like, I assumed she stopped. And she, he's just like, no, I, I haven't, I have not watched that show. Like, it's a kid's show, right? Like, no, I haven't watched it. And then she just kind of hung her head and walked back to her seat, and then we started class. And I was trying my <laughs> hardest to not just bust out laughing. Oh my See, god. See, what happened for, for my first class is we did, like, introductions, so people are like, if you knew how to introduce yourself in Japanese, that's okay, you can do that. If you don't, just do it in English, and then we'll get into Japanese. So everybody goes around, and without fail, literally everybody introduced themselves in, well, either no Japanese, which is fine, but they always mentioned their favorite anime, or, like, what what they want to watch. It, it was all anime. It was just anime. That was the only reason that, that anyone picked to, to join Japanese. So it got to me, and I was like, I'm going to be a little shitter. <laughs> I'm going to throw him for a loop. So I got up, and I was like, you know, uh, my name's Michael. Uh, this is my first uh, Japanese class. I'm not really sure what, what all these Chinese cartoons everybody's talking about are, but uh, I, I just kind of like Japanese food, but it, it seems like a like a fun class, and I sat down, and they looked at me like I had the plague. <laughs> like, you don't, you, see, you don't know anime, and then somebody tried to talk to me about Naruto, and I was like, "What's oh, a Naruto?" No. <laughs> I knew what a Naruto. Remember, you was. have, you have the normie facade. No, I didn't. You see, that's the thing. I was oh. a little, I was a little ch- This was, this was pre lift, so I, I, I looked like you know any other like skinny white dude. I was prime weeb material, like they. You could have picked me out as the weeb. See, now I don't get asked those questions anymore. They just assume, hey, Chad, bro, what's the football like? And I go, so, yeah, <laughs> grunt. The same thing happened for me. So Michael, being older than me, went to went to college for this before me. And so I, I picked up the tradition of fucking with people like this. When asked, like, do you watch anime and things like that, I... I I too did the Chinese cartoons line. You but, gotta. You see, I I was very normie passing, and still am. It's great. I look like a frat dude. Like in other classes, in other random gen ed classes, I have had frat bros on multiple occasions come up and ask me what frat I am in, not if I'm in uh. one, which one. And just being invited <laughs> to random frat parties because, like, yeah, you look like that dude from that other frat. Yeah. So, I just look like a dude, bro, and I talk like one in front of them because it's funny. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Like, what's up, man? You ever, uh, like, what did you think about the game last night, dude? It's pretty fucking sick, yeah. right? The thing Come about Arsenal is, is they always try to walk in it. <laughs> see that ludicrous display last night we're just <laughs> ludicrous display they're like hey are you going to anime conventions like nah bro that ain't my scene that ain't my scene do those yeah. words pass your lips <laughs> yeah i'd have to punch you if i heard you say that i know it's you're hilarious. like cruising to get shoved into a locker talking like that so all of that shit happens but my favorite is, you know, the first first year goes by without much of a hitch. People are just terrible at Japanese. They can't study for shit. They can't re- memorize basic concepts. Like, see, I took German in high school for four years, which it was a high school English cl- or like language class. So it wasn't too hard. But like, I felt bad when I didn't study hard enough for a test for Frau Reardon. Because she was really nice and, like, tried real hard and had to deal with neo-Nazis in her first year. <laughs> I never actually considered that, yeah, neo-Nazis would probably take German. That's oh, for sure, my dude. 
She told us many times about those people. That sounds cool. So they just like walk into class like, what's up, sick? Hi, my dudes. Yes. They will, like, <laughs> That's what we're all here for, right? <laughs> like, I walked up there and I'm like, yo, what's up? My name's Ted and uh, I like Germans. Just got, hate the Jews. Italian inf- I got German and Italian ancestry. It's pretty cool stuff. I didn't go up there like, yeah, what's up? I like video games and shit because I'm not a fucking idiot. But, like, people would come up there and just make, yo, what's up? Hitler did nothing wrong. <laughs> and then sit back down. <laughs> this is that a safe area for me to do. Why didn't I major in German? That sounds hilarious. Fuck. Can we swap? Can we swap the, the, the neo-Nazis into the into the Japanese classes? Dude, I, that would be so much better. Imagine those two groups interacting. It would be hilarious. Imagine Germans and the Japanese teaming together as some kind of Axis. <laughs> oh no. So we'll oh, see. No. We did it Jap- again. Japanese are officially Aryan, so it, it counts. Yeah, dude. Anyway. But there were these two chicks in particular in my class who never studied. The, the way that the classes worked was that they're all in Japanese and you have to memorize, you know, some conversations. Like they got two two people talking. And then, you know, they pick out two people and you do the conversation with, like, some props and some, you know, context given to you. It's like, you're a, you're a taxi driver. You're, like, a woman cheating on her husband. Don't let the taxi driver <laughs> find out. <laughs> That's good. You know? Th- That's a very common situation that one might find in everyday life and need to know how to react to. Right. It's, it's very useful. Just like my favorite film, Taxi Driver. Exactly. You know, but you you would memorize those things and you would like learn new vocabulary words and you have to perform them. And you can't ask questions in English because you can't ask questions in English. It's against the rules. These people, however, would not study at all. And when they would get called on, all they would say is, yeah, I don't know, in Japanese. Just like, yeah, I don't know, and sit back down. (laughs) And the look of disgust and just rage on the professor's face was just yeah, the look of just pure disgust on his face was amazing. He looked like he just wanted to choke them. Did he <laughs> choke them? Because I wouldn't blame him. No jury I mean, would convict. Uh, no jury would convict. But at one point near the end of this semester, like, you know, they, they, they're fumbling through some stuff, and he breaks Japanese. He just, <clears> like, you know, he starts talking to them in English in the middle of class, which he had never done before. Because he knew they wouldn't understand if he said it in Japanese. And just... <laughs> and I've never seen a professor do this in a college course and just says to them, you know, you don't have to show up to my class. If you want to just waste everybody's time, you can just leave. Don't show up if you're not going to study. Get out. Ooh, Yo. Spicy. And that was the point oh, when I realized shit. this was great. This place is it. amazing. I had a teacher like that. We had uh, some... Go on. That was a cool noise. Uh, (laughs) I don't know what what made that noise, but it was cool. Uh, We had had this kid who... This guy. Well, not really. He wasn't a student. Here's the thing. Uh, is he like a non-conventional student? Like no, 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 no. That's that's the good part. It's like this this dude, he just shows up to class and he... uh, he sits down in the chair and the teacher's like, uh, I'm sorry, who are you? And he just starts speaking really, like, rude. I, I don't know if he knew this, but he was speaking, like, really rude Japanese to the teacher. And he's like, no, I should be here. And he's like, no, you're not a student. He's like, no, 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 I'm just going to stay so I can, like, practice. And he's like, no, you have to leave. I don't think you understand. You're not a student. And the guy just kept insisting in really, really rude Japanese that, no, he's allowed to be here. And these are the kinds of weebs that show up. So he, eventually the, the teacher, again, stopped speaking Japanese and just started screaming at the student in English to get the fuck out. And I've never heard him curse before, but he told them to get the fuck out of his class. <laughs> so, wait, what, wait, do I know this it? professor? I'm... Yes. Wait, it's, is, is it? Yes, but you can't mention him. Oh man, that sounds amazing! I would have loved to see that. 
right? It was surreal. So this dude just walks up. Is he just like a homeless dude? No, he's just like, I guess he had taken Japanese before and he wanted to audit the class or something, but he refused to speak English. I guess his Japanese was garbage, so nobody knew what the fuck he was talking about. So he, <laughs> there's these people, okay, that go over to Japan and live there for like a year and like get a Japanese girlfriend and end up talking like a homosexual because they practice Japanese like the way that their girlfriend speaks it. Which is a real danger. Don't do that. I mean, don't date women, but, you know, don't do that. <laughs> Following the fit advice to a T there. Right? So they, they go over and they learn, quote, air quotes, Japanese, by listening to their girlfriends, and they come back talking talking like the most flaming homosexual possible. Because it turns out that when a dude uses Japanese like a girl uses, you sound really, really campy. So you've got these guys who come back and they think they know Japanese, so they try to test into the higher levels, but they can't do it. So they figure, oh, I'll just audit the class for a little bit, and that'll get me up to speed so that I can take these written tests and fail them. So apparently he was <laughs> he was one of those guys, and he just wanted to insist that he sit in class and like answer questions and stuff, you know, taking time for people who are actually paying to be there. Mm -hmm. and, he, and this teacher, he just went off on him, and it was fantastic. But we'd never heard him swear before, and it was great. Yeah, like, you don't see that sort of thing in, like, the rest of American universities that much, right? Like, if that's so There's thing this thing called social skills, and a lot of people who take Japanese don't have them. Most, if not all, I would say, actually. You see, that's that's the amazing thing, is that Japanese class is really difficult for a lot of these people, because what you need to do during the, you know, during the speaking portions is you need to respond to social cues and context with appropriate responses. These people couldn't do that in English. You add in a language <laughs> barrier, and they're completely gone. Yeah, it turns out glomping people is not actually an acceptable form of communication. Yeah. You know, people constantly have to be reminded, no, 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 you can't talk to that person like that. They're not your best friend. But we both study the anime. That makes us best friends, does it not? Yeah, no. So, you said context is really important to Japanese. Like, you, you said learning Japanese from your girlfriend would make you speak, like, uh, flaming homosexual yes. and, like, rude Japanese. Yes. What do you mean by all that? Okay, so Japanese in general, and there's there's exceptions to this, there's to to break down an extremely complicated subject that, you know, scholarly books have been written about, Japanese can be broken down into uh, basically three levels of politeness. There's, hey bro, I'm gonna fucking cut you, get out of my way. There's, I am a normal human being, and here is my normal human speaking voice. And then there's, please dear overlord i supplicate myself in front of you those are about the three levels of japanese that exist and but like male and female speech in japanese is a little bit different so dudes talk one way and girls talk another and it's a lot more codified in japanese than it is in english like that's another thing is people get really really offended when they hear that they're oh, like yeah. they they, they want to force japanese to be pc like, there's words in Japanese, like a word for husband is uh, is basically literally master. And they're like, oh, oh. You, can't, you can't say that. That's, that's, that's sexist. But they don't realize that the word husband, you know, it has historical roots that basically means master. <laughs> so they try to force these, these rules onto Japanese and they end up, you know, sounding retarded. But like men and women speak pretty differently and you'll sound weird if you try to force, like, uh, female speech on male speech. Fem girls yeah, can get like, away with talking like, like, like said, dudes that's a easier. Thing. Yeah. yeah, that's a thing in English. You know, there's just, there's ways that people speak, not, but it sounds like it's much it's more... It's not as uh, much in English. Like, in Japanese, specific word choices and specific, like, uh, ways of ending sentences and, like, conjugations Tonal inflection. And stuff, can make the difference between sounding like I'm a grizzled badass and like I am literally wearing a skirt right now. <laughs> like, and it doesn't matter how you say it. Like, it, you, you just end it's up... It's the word chance. Yeah, it's just word chance. Yeah. 
it, it, it's pretty funny so i've i've met a few people who swear that they're really really good at japanese but they learned it from their uh their girl their girlfriends and so they sound really gay and they don't realize it <laughs> and you never want to be the dude who's like man you sound really gay <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on, go on down to Kabuki Cho, man. <laughs> Find you a nice man. Ah, yes, Kabuki Cho. I'm laughing at that joke because I understand we'll get it. There. But no, we probably won't. Oh, well, that's an entire. Other, to all you dudes who want to have a fun time in Tokyo, go to go to Kabuki Cho. Talk to the first Don't Nigerian to you see for a good time. <laughs> Don't go to Shinjuku. If if, if, if one of you Kabuki ends Cho. up dying from following this advice, it's not my fault. Oh, uh, they've got. You walk down there, and they've got ca- they've got parlors where you get your dick sucked, and they charge by time. <laughs> <laughs> this fifteen <laughs> minutes, and then thirty minutes, and thirty minutes is more econ is more economical. Like fifteen minutes will be t- <laughs> like fifteen minutes will be like twenty five dollars, and then thirty minutes will be like thirty five, and that's a- that's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I want a steal. Uh, don't go to Kabuki Cho. No, go to Kabuki Cho. Please don't, but... <laughs> See, this is the difference. You see, he's still in Japanese classes, so there's a modicum of hope left. I've already graduated, and, I'm, and I say, fuck it. Go to Kabuki Cho, boys. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever go to Japan, we're going to Kabuki Cho. We're not. I got accosted by a very, very polite Yakuza there. But is the yeah? All right, I'm not gonna ask about the yakuza because I don't want to fucking wake up with a decapitated Asian horse head in my bed. Would you be able to tell it's an Asian horse? Yes, from the eyes. Yeah, I knew you. I knew you were going there. Low okay, hanging fruit, so, there, Tad. So as you as you go along in the, all the Japanese classes, you got like spoken midterms that are just straight up oral exams, like ten minutes of complete. Panic. You can get a nice oral exam in Kabuki Cho. This is true. <laughs> Just ten minutes of sheer panic as it's just you and the professor and they will not correct you if you say anything wrong. People started dropping like flies. Just a constant, you know, every week somebody was gone. And they would never say anything either because they were too horrifically embarrassed that they couldn't speak anime. My, my favorite person that ever dropped out in one of my classes, and this is probably just because... At this point, I've become completely numb to anyone else's suffering. So there's this this, this girl, and I'm just remembering this now. But so this is Japanese 101, and she got there, and she had this whole life planned out. It was fantastic. Mm. Yeah, she uh, she was going to master Japanese. Uh, so step one, <laughs> step two, collect underpants. No, so she's going to master Japanese, uh, she's going to move to Tokyo, not anywhere in particular, to- just Tokyo. I mean, it's a huge city, but, you know, you just move there. Um, and she was go- <laughs> she's going to open up a cupcake shop. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> in, in the middle of Tokyo. And, and that's just, that was the entirety of her goal. Uh, we got to hiragana and katakana, where you had to memorize them. You had to memorize all of hiragana in one week and all of katakana in, in one week. And she dropped out halfway through hiragana. <laughs> and I never that saw her again. That reminds me of my, uh, my friend John. His friend is go- is planning on moving to Japan without knowing a single fucking lick of Japanese, but he's going to teach English, so it'll all be... Oh, good. that'll work. No, no, no. That'll he's work. Got, no, no. See, he's got his visa. No, I'm not even no, kidding. It, that will work. work. He'll just be one of those guys. There's tons of people who... that That is reasonable. You can do that. The, uh, the Japanese education system supports tons of completely unqualified, socially inept retards moving to Japan to teach English through the JET program. Good. Which you should never I join. Am actually because, baffled. I mean, I'm sure he's going. He's going through Jet, right? I hope so. No, I mean it, it's pretty much the only way to go through. But it's not a job. You just kind of sit there and regurgitate the stuff that the teacher, that the Japanese teacher tells you, and they pay you money, and then you go drink and bother everyone, and act like you're a super knowledgeable expat, even though you're 
uh, contract only lasts for like two years and then you go back because you don't actually have any marketable skills. And if you can't tell, I dislike people who join Jet. Uh... It, okay. okay, there's some people who are like, I actually want to be a teacher, and I have teaching certification, and, like, being a teacher is something I've always wanted to do. These people very rarely join JET. You get a lot of dudes who are just like, I want to go live in Japan for X dumb reason, and I'm going to do that by going through JET, and then they just get drunk every single night and walk around and bother people, but Yeah, jet and then they try to talk to you. JET, for those of you who want to go be a terrible person in Japan is a exchange program that the uh, Japanese government has set up with the... It's not an exchange program, it's a working... Oh yeah, uh, a work, it's a work, work pro- thing where you go out and uh, teach Japanese kids English in some city in bumfuck nowhere, Japan, because if you think you're going to go to Tokyo, you ain't going to Tokyo, you're going to... Nope. You're going to Farmer Village number 73. You're going, you're going to Saitama, like boys. <laughs> Hell Yeah. So, by the time you finish, like, 1102, pretty much everybody is gone. And I signed up for a summer intensive program. You know, it's like two months and you do two semesters worth of shit. And so, I went in there thinking, certainly, nobody other than people who are dedicated and want to turn this into an actual skill that you can use to get a job later or do things with are going to sign up for a program that is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., constant Japanese. It's like a job. Yeah, you've got, you know, so you've got eight hours a day of actual, like, you know, classes where you're constantly performing, plus your preparation time for each one of those things. So I had stretches during that where I did nothing but study and then do Japanese for, like, a week. You know, just five days straight of, I did not do anything else. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what intensive courses are like. And it's surprising that more that people actually still take them, but... Right, I so mean, I went in there, you know, because you needed, like, a recommendation from the professors to get in, and all this stuff, and I went in there thinking, finally, finally I'm going to be rid of the Leo's. And then I roll up, and it is the same damn people. It is the exact same crowd. There was, like, one dude, one dude who's in, who's still in the level, who was, like, good. You know, me and him are, like, the, the top two in the class, and we're actually, like, there to learn Japanese. Crazy. But then you had guys, like, fucking... If you haven't ever watched the tale of Debi Tokun... Fucking Debi Tokun. Go, go watch it, and this is what that guy was. He rolled up with his DS in class all the time. Instead Playing of, games in public. What in, a nerd. Instead of studying between classes like he should have been doing, it was terrible. You know, and it was just tons of tons and tons of weeaboos and the most flamboyantly homosexual stereotype I've ever met in my life. That guy was great, though. It was just the same people, and they still couldn't speak Japanese, and they were still just doing it so that they could play an they could play fucking video games and watch anime without subtitles, which Which they will not be able to do. You have spent your entire summer and a ton of money on this, and they didn't give up. And so now I'm. It's almost admirable. What is the willpower that drives these fucking? you know, Dakimakura owning pieces of shit to actually <laughs> to actually commit themselves to that shit that hard. Except they're not really committing themselves because they still can't actually speak Japanese, which is baffling. I mean I mean that's just that's just how it go. Like right. barely anybody so. who Japanese is a really weird language because the the upper echelons of the people who teach it have the same levels of pedagogy and like, uh, you know, classically trained. They're all classically trained. They've got PhDs. They've done real research, but they have to teach just a gaggle of retards every single year. And it's like they must look they must look at the other at the other language departments with like starry eyes. 
and like, like just a deep like, the sense of regret. Except for the neo Nazis. Well, like, yeah, like French imagine department. the French department. You get a bunch of like, you get a bunch of like hipsters that smell like hummus, but at least they want to learn the language and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it, Japanese is really weird because Chinese has a ton of business students, so they're like reasonable people. Uh, Korean has a bunch of K-pop retards, which is fine. At least they at least they keep their autism in one small subsection. And there's a lot of people who have, like, Korean family, and they, they're taking classes because they want to, you know, talk with their grandparents, and, aw, isn't that adorable? You know, it, it's reasonable. It's just Japanese. It's just Japanese that's, like... It's like a shining beacon, and it calls out to the worst people. So... <laughs> Things that happened during summer intensive. It was nine to five every every day, so everybody was horrifically sleep deprived. This led very quickly to me no longer giving a fuck. Because normally that, you, would that put happens. Up a, you would put up a facade at least of civility and like, haha, I'm not going to openly make fun of you. That went away. Like you would just end up telling people like. Dude, why are you still here? You don't even study. Like, come on, man. Come on. Come on! You done had enough of I mean, this. to be fair, there are some people in these classes. There's, like, a couple of holdouts of people who are who are actually there to study. But the thing is, is that the, the, the ones that leave the impression on you, it, it's not the good... It's not the good ones. No, yeah. Like it's, the, uh, the, the shit people... that stays with you isn't the, sh- isn't the good shit. The, the good people in my class, we had these two dudes who were, uh, they actually studied and wanted to learn Japanese for reasonable reasons, and then we had the Chinese students, uh, one of whom was, like, getting a PhD in linguistics or something, so it was, like, really knowledgeable about linguistics and stuff. All the Chinese students, great. Love them. Like, I made, I became best friends with the hive mind of, of Chinese chicks there. I don't remember any of their names. <laughs> I can't pronounce any of their names. Neither can Chinese, I. Went to school Chinese Chinese is people. just too hard for me. They they all sat in the I same I went to school with people for 12 years and I still don't know their names. Yeah, but they they sat in this corner just three of them and all of their answers were always the same. Like they just pooled their study resources together and became one entity when it came to speaking Japanese. They were indistinguishable. It was hilarious. But then we got we got Californian gay Polish dude, and this guy was the best because he was a walking stereotype in every single sense of the word. He had the lisp, and it was strong, and you could hear it in Japanese too. He apparently spoke like five languages, and he told us in every single language someone you know regularly say, "Dude, you sound really gay." This extends, Was he not gay? This, this extends to sign language. No, he is. How apparently, can you be gay in sign language? I don't know. I don't know, but apparently it's a thing. That's, that's like, impre- I'm impressed. Right? He's got very soft hands. So, you know, he, he talks like this, and, man, Japanese is so hard. And he, he did, like, the little click. Every time it was it was amazing, but he was talking about his car one time. He's like, "So, you know, my Mustang's kind of running a bit weird." And I just like, Dude, "Wait, you have a Mustang?" I was on like two hours of sleep. He was like, "What? Do you think I had a Prius?" I just said, "Yes." <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he goes, "Well, I wanted a Prius, but my Ooh. dad wouldn't let me." His dad wouldn't let him buy a Prius. His dad would not let him purchase a Prius. And the exact reasons were he was walking down the lot and he was like, oh, I want I want the Prius. And his dad just looked at him and said, I'm not buying you that gay-ass car. <laughs> <laughs> and all I can envision... Because he never bitched about his dad at any other time, like, being homophobic or anything. All I can imagine is that this kid's dad was, like, the most supportive. He's like, my kid came out came out as gay, I still love him and everything. But then he just starts being, like, 
a walking stereotype. And at a certain point, you're just like, I'm not going to let my kid be the gay kid from California who drives a goddamn Prius. <laughs> like, son, you can be gay or you can drive a Prius, not both. <laughs> pick one. <laughs> Decide. And apparently he picked he picked being gay because, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't. You know, the Prius isn't worth it. Some people are just born Prius different. owners. They're, they're born Prius owners. <laughs> <laughs> so, these all these people somehow managed it's to stick it out. It's not a choice. They somehow managed to stick it out through all of this, despite just failing so hard at every single class. And I get out of intensive, you know, and I'm like, okay, finally, I'm in year three. And finally, they're going to be gone. None of them are gone. The class is still entirely weeaboos. They've spent three years on this, and they're still just weeaboos. Uh, it doesn't change. I mean, I, I can tell you right now, it does not change. I'm in, I'm in grad school, and it doesn't change. <laughs> ah, they're tenacious little buggers. I mean, th here's the thing. By all by all rules and standards, I am a weeaboo, I guess. But, like, I think it, it, the, the standard definition of weeaboo has some wiggle room in it because there's the difference, I think, to save my own, you know, dignity, whatever little of it I have left. There's, there's a difference between being like, I love literally anything from Japan and saying, boy, I sure do love me 2D girls. Like... <laughs> no, yeah, like right? there has to be a difference. They're both despicable, and <laughs> they're both not things to be proud of. But at least one of them is discerning. I feel like it's it's the difference between being like I'm an alcoholic who will drink literally anything that's put in front of my stupid face, and I'm a wine connoisseur. Like you're both alcoholics, but at least one of you is classy about it. Right. So, like it, it's, it's the same. It's thing called the tasting, I'm... and it's classy. It, it's the same thing where you, like, I'll talk about, you know, like, French art house movies with the same enthusiasm that I'll talk about, you know, some random anime, which is a lie, but it makes me sound better. Right? Like, that's what I do with lifting. Exactly. It's cover. So, speaking of, speaking of cover, my cover has yet to be blown. It's been three years. And people They'll find still, out eventually. People still talk about anime and stuff past me, and like you know, a new person will come into the class and will just be like, "Oh no, yeah, that's Dan. He doesn't he doesn't know anything about anime. He doesn't watch anime. He's a good. It's boy. hilarious. <laughs> but doesn't partake of the devil's so, animation. The thing is, <laughs> that I really animation. just feel bad for all the professors because so many of them are super cool. Like we had this one. She was like, she's like the super excitable happy Japanese grandma you wish you had. Yeah, she's awesome. I had the same professor. Like, she would just, you know, sprint into class, even when there wasn't a hurry, and just like, be super excited about everything. Like, she had to come in for somebody, and her English was not very good, but it was great. But she had to cover for somebody for a class. And she just rolls up, slaps a bunch of papers down on the table, pantomimes being out of breath like she just ran a marathon. You know, like, ha, ah, ah, ha, and then just, like, stops immediately and just goes, Today I am Pichu Hita. Stand in, teacher. The best. And then she just launches into the lesson, and it was amazing. I have a story about her. Like, I was doing intensive... And uh, we were, we were, this is a level you get to where you basically, they, they hold off on all the rude shit until the very, very end for good reason, because <laughs> yep. otherwise you could never get people to stop using it. Right. So at, at the end, we're, we're getting to this part where it was uh, polite, politely declining, but f politely, but forcefully declining to do something. Right. So the, the setup was you've committed a crime. And the police are here to talk to you. And you need to tell them politely but firmly to fuck off. A useful skill. Now, 
I figured that I could get away with just saying, I'm not going to talk to the police at all. Like, am I being detained? <laughs> so what I did was I, I concocted a sentence, which was, I'm sorry, uh, I won't talk to the police without my lawyer present. Because there's a whole, like, conversation, it's a set canned conversation that you're supposed to go back and forth to. But I was feeling cheeky. So I was like, I'm sorry, I can't talk to the police without my lawyer present. Without missing a beat. She, like, looks at me, pantomimes picking up a phone, holds it to her face, goes, mm-hmm, hello. Oh, is this Michael's Michael's lawyer? Oh, you say he can talk to the police? Click. Okay, go. <laughs> she did that all in one fluid motion. Like, yeah, nice try being sneaky, you piece of shit. So, normally they don't like you being sneaky like that, unless you're using it to expose other people in your class. Like, you spend, like, five months being a short storekeeper and selling people ballpoint pens, while they go, I'll have this two is a of pen. those, and two of those. And people are like, I can count things? This is ridiculous. But... So I was a Counting in Japanese is bullshit. It is. But so I'm the shopkeeper and they're like going through this, you know, it's a canned conversation and they know how many of what thing they need to ask for. But they don't actually know Japanese. They've just memorized the conversation and are going to parrot it back at me. Right? Without actually knowing what they're saying. So all I did at the end of the conversation, like they, I saw them like four pencils, you know, three pens of various colors. And I just go, will there be anything else today, sir? <laughs> in Japanese, and they so literally all they had to say was no, thank yes, you. Yes, they yeah. just had to understand what I said and reply, but they just freeze. They go full sponge gar, <laughs> <laughs> just, just full on pause, and they just go dead. They go completely quiet. Weeaboos do this thing. I think they're part deer, where <laughs> they freeze. Like, if they don't know something, they don't ask questions. They don't say, ah, oh, yeah, I don't understand, really. Like, the context is a little bit little bit tricky here. They just freeze. And they just kind of look around. Like, like just, just start looking around a bit. And then they just walk back to their seat. And I just see the professor take up his little notebook that he has to grade everybody's performance every day. And he wasn't going to mark anything until I said anything. And I just see him r start writing furiously. <laughs> Ooh. You don't want to be that guy. And I, and I just tanked their daily grade because before, because beforehand in class, they were bitching about how sexist the professor was for saying, for insisting that you use language that doesn't make you sound stupid. It's like, I can't believe they're trying to make us use gendered language in a in a in a language where those sort of things exist. I mean, Japanese isn't strictly a gendered language, but it's like I don't know, yeah. if you're a dude and you're using the the version of I that yeah. like women use, you yeah, sound if dumb. If you say atashi, you sound it just makes you sound stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's not like a personal choice sort of thing, like it's not like, this is how I express myself. It's like, you just sound retarded. And if you're a chick and you use ore, you sound badass. Yeah, please do. Continue. I like it. Yeah, German has um, gendered words as well. A lot well, of der, di, das, well, stuff like that. Well, thankfully, Japanese, Japanese doesn't have actually have, like, gendered, gendered nouns and stuff. Yeah. Those, it doesn't have that, but there's very clear distinctions between like masculine and feminine speech yeah so, i'm trying to think of more stories that i've i've blocked out of my memory of of times when things went went horribly bad well I've got i think some. i just stayed in the corner and tried to keep to myself no yes i i've got some you see in my most current class it started in level three and he somehow managed to pass through to level two this is a man, it, it's, they're, they're, they're a duo. What we got here is, if you've ever seen the meme of China, like, Luigi's racist Chinese cowboy impersona impression, take it away from here, Tad, you know it by heart. Uh, Luigi's Chinese cowboy impression is so fucking racist that Mario's stomach ulcer practically explodes and he can't tell Luigi to stop being so fucking racist. Thank you. So, take Luigi from that 
put him in the 3D, then take one of the Goombas from the Super Mario Bros. movie with like the tiny head and like the <laughs> teeth and, and the teeth that you can pass a train through each individual one, and you put that into a dude, and these guys are a duo. And I, Chinese Luigi and the literal Goomba. And I Did he wear you, a cowboy hat? He wears a hat. <laughs> and I swear to you. Chinese Luigi has not said a single word in Japanese correctly for a year. <laughs> not a single time has he been correct, which is impressive. You would get something right on accident at <laughs> least once, but no. So his English is just fine, so I'm not making fun of somebody with like a speech impediment or something. He can speak in English just fine. Fluently and all of that, you know, it's his first language. I, I like that you have to dip, give a disclaimer that this person can speak English fluently. <laughs> right, because... Because <laughs> that's not actually a given with weeaboos. Okay, Michael. Normally we would refrain from this, but give me just a bog-standard 101 Japanese phrase. Uh... Can you say the pizza is aggressive? <laughs> I could actually. I mean, no, I'm Pussy not gonna want. do pizza is aggressive. How about just uh let's go. Konnichiwa. Kyo wa ii tenki desu ne. Okay, here's my Hello. best impression of him that I can give. And the you're weather going is to nice think today. And you're going to think that I make that I'm like taking the piss, but I'm not. You go konnichiwa. Kyo ga ii zen ten 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 tonki tonki da deska. Hold on, just a fucking second. What? <laughs> he I, sounds like a goober. I've not heard this before. You're telling me that you're not taking the piss with that? I am not. In fact, I wasn't embellishing enough. It's more Jesus. like, like I can't even do it because every syllable is wrong. That's impressive. Imagine I'm impressed. that you took like, imagine that you took one of those like text to speech robots, and you know they have like t intonation <laughs> settings and everything like that. You sh set that shit to random. You took every <laughs> syllable, just changed one letter, and that's that dude's Japanese. Every particle is wrong. Every sentence is wrong. Uh, he has referred to himself as San many times. <laughs> you don't do that. Uh, he does not understand the concepts of being polite. You know, he, he doesn't understand the concept of present and past tense. Literal things that you learn in the first year. And he has somehow managed to pass the classes. And I don't know how. Like, the classes aren't just super easy, no. right? Here's the way that it works. It's, it is very, very. It, it's a, uh, what do you call these classes? They're uh, bachelors of arts. They fall under bachelors of arts, generally speaking. I mean, you could get a BA. Yeah, it's yeah, a BA in Japanese. Arts. So it's a liberal arts classes, which are horrifically hard to fail. It's easy to get bad grades, but it's hard to get kicked out. Yeah, because like, you get they you want get your money. Grade, you get a daily grade of you know four point is the best, and then like one point five is like you know you failed. And from what I've heard, he's never gotten below like a two, despite yes. never saying anything right. So he's, that makes he's him like a like, straight D student. Yeah, so he's getting like fifty to sixty percent every day just by existing. And that's what they say: D's get degrees. And the other. And then Goomba Man, like, I swear, I'm, I'm just, every time he sits next to me, I just scoot over a little bit, so that if Mario shows up and bounces off of his head, he won't hit me for the double. <laughs> I don't nice believe you. Reference. No man could look that much like a Goomba. He looks exactly like a Goomba, but, like, this is just a fact. <laughs> Like, everything is just Goomba-like. He even has, if you imagine the, the general what if body it's shape Goomba? of the Goomba, right? You know, like that oblong, <laughs> sh 
<laughs> yo, but okay, but like yo, tiny but what ass, if it's guy like Goomba? Tiny ass legs and like a midsection that just extends into space. He has. You're ignoring my point. <laughs> I am. I don't want to think about that. I bet it's guy Goomba. Goomba got back. Please don't do this to me. So my theory as to how they have actually managed to get through this shit, like somehow managing to not fail out of the class, is I'm pretty sure that they just, like, nail the written and eavesdropping sections, probably by cheating. Because I can't imagine them actually, like, learning Japanese. That would be ridiculous. Like, there are actually some online study guides and stuff that have, like, the answers for the listening quizzes and stuff, and I'm pretty sure they just use those. I mean... It, it is baffling, but I know how a lot of the Chinese kids pass is because they just know all the kanji and all the writing stuff, so they just write huge fucking essays, oh, and then they try to read them in class, and you just have no idea what they're saying, but they can't actually fail them. Right. So so you've got the weeaboos who can't do anything, and then you've got the next level of weeaboos, the ascended weeaboos, who are just as bad, if not worse, the... I spent a year in Japan in high school, and I think I know Japanese. The ones who are constantly trying to, like, one-up everybody by using difficult Japanese, only to be told yes. that they're using it wrong. <laughs> because their friends in Japanese high school never bothered to tell the stupid gaijin that they were speaking like that their shit's all retarded. Like, they're just walking around full-on simple jack, and the j the j like, the Japanese high school kids just love that shit, apparently. I mean, to be fair, if there was someone coming over, like, speaking, English, like, he was from, like, say that there was someone from Japan who came over to America, and he was saying, howdy, y'all. Yo, you, you're goddamn sure I would let him do that. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. Or, like, he used, he used words subtly wrong. Like, but these are the people who constantly... You know, like the people who just don't know anything, the professors don't mind those guys. The people who inadvertently say hilarious shit via attempting to pretend like they know things, those are the guys that are No, the those best. guys are hilarious. It's the people the, who the insist that know which... that they, they are correct because I lived in Japan. No, yeah, <laughs> these are a combination. So in intensive, the the best one that I that we had was we were learning the words for, like, giving and receiving mm -hmm. things, right? These are very difficult for people in Japanese classes, primarily because they've never, like, properly said thank you for giving me a thing or written a formal email in mm -hmm. their life without talking about Naruto. Giving and receiving in Japanese is kind of messed up because in English, all of our, our, our word for give is just give. Like, I gave it to you. He gave it to me. Like, it's all the same. It's just give, gave give I mean, it's not hard in japanese ha, 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 ha. nope completely different words like is it somebody who's better than you giving something to you well you better you better use a different word is it something that's somebody who's better than you is receiving something from you that's also a completely yeah. different word have fun but so this was the subject of some confusion so in one in one of the the conversations you were supposed to say hey those are some nice, like, that's a nice purse. And they're supposed to say, ah, yes, I bought it. Like, my husband bought it for me, right? Like, it's really nice. Thank you for, for saying that it was nice. But due to the politeness level of the word that she used, it was these two chicks. She just turns and gives the biggest smile and says, it's like, oh, that, that purse is really nice. Where did you get it? And she says, oh, yeah, your husband bought Yo! it for me last week. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry. And everybody lost their shit. The professor just like, like sat down and just started laughing Damn, their bitch. ass off. He said that to her fucking face too. That's cold. He said it to her it's face. Like, oh yeah, it's nice. Your husband it bought stone, it for me. It was cold blooded, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> like, like, like step to me. Like it sounds like some shit out of Mean Girls. It was beautiful. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. But you see, those are the fun. Those are the fun, wacky ones. The the not so fun, wacky ones are when people like 
don't learn what words you're not supposed to use in things and just insist on, on using them all the time. Or when before class, Chinese fucking Luigi, in full view of everybody, just wants to, he's just like, hey guys, like, hey, let's let's all say a bunch of Japanese swear words. Won't that be funny? How old is this guy? I don't know. Like older than thirteen. Yeah. So you know, he he him and Goomba were whispering like the, the Japanese word for like vagina <laughs> at each other, <laughs> and. And the professor, who at this 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 professor was female, looked at them and just glared at them, just like, like the fuck did you say? Say it again! Like I fucking dare you! Like the look of pure yeah, hatred. Yeah, I mean, th- there's only a couple of words in Japanese that qualify as a quote unquote swear word or something that you just like don't say. That's one of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. really? Japanese doesn't have a lot of swear words, unfortunately. It's mostly like how you say it like inflection like you can the same mm-hmm. the same basic word for hey please stop messing around can be turned into hey don't fuck with me depending on how you say it yep you got to roll the r's i mean you can add like like fuck yous to the end of stuff but they're not they don't get bleeped on tv that's the thing right it, with with very few exceptions so that's pretty much it for the actual Japanese language classes, but once I got into the higher level Japanese course, you have to start taking, like, you know, secondary classes, like history and, you know, composition and things like that, and the weeaboos continue. In particular, there's this one dude who's, like, a fifth-year student, and I don't know why he hasn't graduated, and everything that he says is in this pseudo-racist accent, like, Ooh-ah! Sukhoi desu ne! Like, he came out of that like he came out of that uh fucking uh Sakura Khan commercial and game like anime and game Kurukume. that shit it sounds like he came out of that but this mo- but this this motherfucker we were in a in a composition class and the professor is extremely deaf he's got a damn court stenographer like a you know, writing down what everybody says so that he can actually answer questions. He's got double big ass hearing aids. He's great. I love the dude. But so he takes this as an excuse to do running commentary in Japanese in the background. Just like, you know, anytime anything happens, just going, Ooh ah, sugoi desu ne so desu ka like in this really weird fucked up voice. And so, I, like a crazy person, after class, said, Hey, excuse me, do you mind not talking during class? It's very disruptive. Wow, that's really fucked up. I can't believe you would say something like that to him. I know. Them's and he words. responds to me, We are both white. We are, we are both white. In case white. any of the listeners couldn't he tell. He responds to me, We are in America. We are in America. And this motherfucker responds to me in Japanese. Oh. And what he says is like, huh? I don't really understand. I'm like, dude, it's rude as, sh- it's rude as hell to talk during class. Please stop. It's like, at, like we'll talk a, b- a bit later, but I really don't get it. And so I'm like, this guy's either playing dumb or he's fucking with me. Yeah, you get people like that where they like... And on all three of those counts... They, they insist on using Japanese. On all three of those counts, fuck you. So, what I did was, the next class I asked him again, like, could you, like... For this class, could you please shut the hell up so we can actually hear what the professor is saying? He's like, I really, like, I don't get what the problem is. If you want to, like, if it's bothering you, you should just Whoa. move. Whoa. <laughs> Bitch. Whoa. So, I, I I immediately hit up Michael on Skype and was just like, give me the rudest Japanese that you can to yell at Oh, me. yeah, I, I have that somewhere, don't I? Because I had, I had some ideas. Oh, the sentence that I told you to say to this kid? I never get I never get to use, like, hey, why don't you go fuck off and die, you absolute human refuse. I never get to say that sort of thing because I'm, like, a nice person. The thing is, the best part is that our Japanese professor, he's, like, 70. He learned Japanese because he was working at, like, like picking fruit somewhere and his Japanese boss asked him if he liked booze in like the 70s. He was like, hey man, want to go to Japan? Sure, why not? I like booze and fish. That's his story. Mm. Dude is great. I love this guy. 
Yeah, I have it saved as yelling at fuckboy. Yo. Like, this was planned of just like, I am going to yell at this guy. Do you want to do the honor? Because I can send it to you uh, right yeah, now. Yeah, send it, send it to me. But I'm not you never gonna... get to use it. All right, hold, hold on. Oh, come on. I gotta get in. You gotta get into character for this sort of shit. Just think that, like, I'm talking about Homestuck, and I just won't stop. Oh, you wrote it in fucking. It's in. It's in. You wrote it in that. Oh wow! <laughs> I forgot how bad this was. So <laughs> the translation is. Don't fuck with me, you asshole. Unlike you, some people here have a future. Please realize that you're fucking trash and never speak again. Ooh, oh, let me see if we, You're gonna cut here, because I want to see if I can get a good take of this. Fuzaken na te me. Damare. Omae to chigatte mirai ga aru shita iru. Jibun ga kuzu da to rikai shite nidotto to hanasu na. Yes! It... And this guy was Ooh. level five in Japanese. He was he was he was about to hit like, you know, he was about to get a new stat point and everything. Get a yeah, new perk. You know, he was about to class Do-do-do. up. And so he understood all of this, and he just looks at me, and then just like turns away and doesn't say <laughs> shit anymore, because they are not used to the the, the Japanese people. The people in the Japanese program are not used to somebody just telling them to fuck off everybody needs to be told to fuck off from time to time right like i don't give a fuck who you are if you're talking during a class that i'm trying to pay attention in i'm going to tell you to fuck off and if you refuse to talk to me in english i'll use (laughs) japanese and the best part is that the professor was just talking about he was just talking about, like, the class before, how mad he was that when he was first learning Japanese, he learned all of these ways, like, from, you know, shonen manga, of how to yell at people and tell people to fuck off, and he never really got to use it. And, like, the first time somebody tried to start shit with him in Japan, Dude, it's he was great. so excited. Because he's like, finally, I finally get to sound like a badass. And so, I'm sitting here like, I wonder when that time will come for me. And it came the next week. The funny thing is, is, like, 90% of how I talk to my lifting bros in Japan is just, like, it's it's basically that, but, like, without the, the like, kill yourself edge, which is fantastic. Yeah, it, it's more bro <laughs> speak how we talk because to each we're other. all musclehead lifting bros, but it, it's essentially the same, and you never get to talk like that anywhere else, which is bad because I have to catch myself when I'm talking to teachers and stuff, because it's like, imagine if you were in an interview and you said, had, like, the sudden urge to pepper in, like, bro, you will not believe how good this report is. <laughs> like, wait, no, that's not how I talk to people. <laughs> right. So, speaking of, we're both in the same study yeah. abroad program. Like, we got into the best school that they offer, you know, like, the fucking Yale kind of of Japan, kind of. It's like an Ivy League school, basically. But the interview, the interview that we had is with, like, the top the top dog on campus yeah she's brutal just an old school academic to the nth degree like doesn't give a fuck about any of your problems just no what are you planning to do to to succeed at the goals that you've set out please take it from here you must know what you're talking about otherwise you wouldn't fucking be here now would you (laughs) very intimidating uh chinese luigi actually blew his chance with her immediately during a uh, literature class she was sitting next to him because, like, her oldest friend from campus, and this plays out like a damn Seinfeld episode. Her oldest friend from back when she was in college was, like, gonna do a presentation in our literature class about something. And so she was sitting in because it's her friend and all of that. And she sits right next to Chinese Luigi. And Chinese Luigi has his laptop open. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chinese Luigi is not paying attention to the, to the, to the seminar. Chinese Luigi is watching anime on his laptop. Oh, no. Chinese Luigi Ooh. is watching ecchi anime on his laptop. He is watching borderline pornography. And I just see her. Oh, my God. You know, this old school, hardcore academic just kind of look at him, look at the screen, look back at the front of the seminar, and I just see her mentally crossing him out from any reference ever. It was beautiful. So, we... we I did the interview to get into the study abroad program thing, and I took Michael's advice that he gave me of, they seem super intimidating and everything, but just say a bunch of puns in Japanese, 
and like be cool. It does. It totally worked. It totally worked. They lo- she loves puns. Everyone loves puns. And the thing is, is in Japanese class, like, there's when when it comes time for the interview, you get all these people who have been fucking around in class try to act really, really serious for the first time ever. So it's just awkward. So if you just come in there, like, roll up, like, hey, yo, what's up? They're uh, much more receptive. Yeah, like, I, I did that. And I also, in in a bit more flowery and less confrontational of language, said... Hello, yes, I'm a white person who is trying to go to Japan. I am not that white person who is going to try to go to Japan. You never want to be that guy. Like, like, do you think that I watch anime and read manga and shit? Maybe, but I'm going <laughs> to say I don't. I'm going there for the cultural experience. I really enjoy the food. Classical music and mythology, I love that shit. Like, mythology? Let me tell you about mythology and how much I love it. No, it's not, it's not no anime. Anime's going into the, the <laughs> bye-bye zone. zone. You know, what's an anime? I don't know. Ha ha, I'm an eccentric white guy who wants to learn Japanese. And that I'm not a huge, useless weeb. Being moderately socially competent and not being an outward gigantic weeb cinched it. That'll do it. So, to any of you, to any viewers who are trying to learn Japanese, just like be a normal fucking person. (laughs) I know it's hard because you watch anime. I know that's going to be very difficult for you. You know, you're the sort of person who starts conversations with people Whoa. on the bus. <laughs> you're the sort of person who sees a pin. You see, you're the person who sees a pin on someone's messenger bag of a character you like from an anime, and immediately assumed that person that you saw is your best friend. I, I was gonna be really upset when you started talking about pins about of anime characters on your messenger bag because I have those. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're the sort of motherfucker who orders pepperoni pizza and then takes off the pepperoni. Whoa! What the fuck? A complete, a complete defying of social norms and just, you have to be so oblivious to do it. And that's you, local weeaboo. My advice is, try and take Japanese, it'll make you hate Japanese, and then maybe you'll stop watching so much anime. No, here's you know, one thing just... I want to know about possible career paths with there the aren't Japanese any. language. Literally, is there? Or are you just did you just take it to translate pornography so and here's play the video th- games? They include translator, Don't. working at a Japanese Don't. business for 16 hours a day. Well, here's the thing. Uh, text <laughs> translation is dying. Because, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but Google has been making big old strides in uh, having decent translations. They're still bad. Like, Google Translate's not good by any means, and don't actually use it to try and talk to your favorite manga author, because you'll end up looking like an ass. But they're picking Japanese and only Japanese as your only marketable skill is not a good idea. Like, it's not Chinese. You won't be able to get away with, mm-hmm. like being the guy who knows Chinese at some company. You have to have, like, I don't know, economics, business, some something that you can tie into it. Like, an engineering degree and Japanese is a really good idea because there's tons of car companies that need people who can talk to their Japanese engineers. So, like, if you do something like that, it's a good idea. Picking just Japanese because you want to be a translator is a terrible idea. Translation sucks. Like, unless you're doing translation because you like the material, like because you enjoy reading it, it will quickly suck the life out of you. Like, even translating stuff that I enjoy, like, I translate Monster Musume, and it's monthly. And even that is, like, when you have to, when you know you have a deadline and you have to do it, even if you don't feel like it, it can become a drag. So, like, making that your 9 to 5? No way. Never. I would never do it. All right, well, these people sound like scum of the earth, and I'm happy... That you shared it with me? Anytime. Okay, so I feel like, you know, I I, I do want to just hit, since it would never go into a full episode, but I do want to hit people up with the post-credits, post-music, you know, after the scenes thing of... Yeah, Nicolas Cage is coming out of the shadows. Right. I'm sorry, not Nicolas Cage, uh, Nick Fury. So... Uh, I'd say for this podcast, it's Nicolas Cage. Yeah, so when Michael was doing Study Abroad, me and one of my other brothers went to go visit him and during this time there was one point where they were uh you know they were out like snowboarding or something doing something and i went off to go to an arcade by myself because i play fighting games you know i play like fighting games competitively and stuff 
some people have told me that there was a good arcade to go to. Here it is on a map. Go. It was in Shinjuku. I'm like, I don't, I don't know shit, so that seems fine. Shinjuku's awesome. Yes, but I go through, I follow the directions, and I'm like, hey, what's this? There's like this really big gate in the middle of Tokyo with a bunch of characters I can't hey. read. Well, this place looks sleazy. Turns out this is Kabukicho. <laughs> so, Kabukicho is a red light district. Yes, it is. Prostitution is illegal in Japan, technically. You see, anything short of just full-blown sex is completely on the table and legal. And so, they don't even try to hide it. This is where the aforementioned by the minute mix of parlors are. I don't know how that works. Like, I, I still don't know the logistics of it. And you missed like, your one who's chance. Who's the guy who comes in and is like, like, do you, do you estimate how long it'll take? Like, mm, I don't know. Today's feeling like a fifteen minute day. <laughs> no, you. What you do is you walk in and you you see the the girls and then you you estimate based on that. It's like, well, she looks like about a thirty minute. <laughs> and can you just imagine the look of horror if you just walked in, slapped down enough cash, you're like six hours. <laughs> You're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> what do they? Even, what do they do? They ask you politely but firmly to leave. <laughs> <laughs> firmly, haha. <laughs> so anyway, I'm walking down there, and a yakuza starts talking to me. He's got you know, he's got tats all over. He's wearing sunglasses at dusk. He's like he looks like he just came out of the game, like yakuza with how blatant this dude was and he's tried to start speaking to me in English because he saw a white guy he's like and this is completely accurate to how he sounded he goes hey man you America yeah he, he didn't wait for me to to say whether or not I was American. you're white you're American he just went you American yeah he gets really close to me he's like hey man hey man what you want what you want we I can get you whatever you want you want strip club you want alcohol drink? You want what? <laughs> With like the super high pitched intonation at the yeah. end, and he like closed his eyes and like twisted his whole body with it, like, like ooh, ooh, spicy. You want alcohol ooh, drink? Data. You want what? <laughs> alcohol drink. Hell so yeah. I'm guessing the story ends with you and him becoming and best friends. I wish. I still talk to him. I every would week. still be in Japan, being a hitman for the yakuza. That would be a way better life. I'd be missing so many fingers. But this Yakuza kept following me, and he kept offering me various illegal things while I'm just not engaging him whatsoever. Like, real talk, I'd be shitting my pants right now because I am in a foreign country with a man who is part of the Yakuza following me. <laughs> I would be, like, on the verge Now, of see, spreading. the Yakuza are real polite as long as you don't actually follow them. Like, as long as you're out yeah. in daylight, they're not going to do anything. And really, it's not the Yakuza, right. it's the, the, the Nigerians you gotta be worried about. The Nigerians? Yep. Yes. The pirates? I'm sorry, that was Somalia. Yeah, it's Somalia, but Nigerians, no. Yeah, don't follow Nigerian people in, in Tokyo. You'll get drugged, and they'll make you spend a shit ton of money on, like, alcohol and stuff. Fun times. But, anyway, the guy keeps following me, and he just keeps it very politely, but firmly offering me things. You know, like, Come on, man, it's not it's not that far. You know, it's really good bar. We got all the best drink. You know, all, all this stuff. Like, girls, they're, they're so hot. <laughs> you know, and he just keeps being really nice about it, though. And then I get to the arcade, and I'm about to go in, and he just goes, Oh, you go to the arcade? Oh, have a great night. And he just goes back to selling things on the street to other people. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, That's not how I expected that just, to end, but I'm happy it did. Like, just like, oh, bye then. Ha ha, have fun. Hey man, have a imagine good time. Imagine how much better every, um, imagine how much better every American city would be if all dangerous criminals were as nice as that guy. Like, can you just imagine going through, like, Gary, Indiana, and some dude just pops out in a nice suit, and it's just like, excuse me, sir, would you like to purchase some narcotics? Perhaps some prostitutes. That sounds fantastic. Hey. Hey, man, you don't know. This is Trump's America. Anything could happen. <laughs> like, and then if you say no, they don't even say anything. They're just like, oh, have a nice time in our city. Welcome to Gary, Indiana. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Ta-ta. Gary, Indiana. Just, Gary, Indiana. Like, you, 
like you know that they're terrible people like that yakuza guy has probably been part of like some human trafficking schemes but in that moment i felt bad for not being receptive enough to him <laughs> like that guy was really nice to me oh, I, man. I was kind of a dick to him i should have at least said hi maybe i should have gotten some horse you know you know maybe maybe i should have gotten some alcohol drink maybe you should have got some horse <laughs> yeah you, you gotta you gotta really extend it there that's how you knew they were good all right i think that's a solid ending point hold on let me go see what's up with this stupid fucking dog I'm going to go break her legs. I'll be right back. That's staying on the podcast. Yeah, definitely. Since since this bit is getting edited out, you know, I really just yeah. actually hate anime. I'll never tell. Just completely hate it. Everyone hates anime. I'm just pretending to like anime for the Twitter followers. It's true. The dog was sitting there barking at a gate that was half open because she didn't want to cross it. That's reasonable. This is the shit I gotta put up with.